Good morning, it's me, Josh Hutcherson, and welcome back to the Minecraft Guide. In today's episode, it's a race against the clock. By the end of this one, we're going to build one of the easiest, best mob farms to build in the entire world, and talk about how and why it works in the process. It's a race against the clock, though. This currently, as it stands right now, day 486 in the evening of it. It feels good and strong. We gotta wrap this baby up and add a mob farm to our skyline over here before day number 500. We should probably get going. Uh, so I got a secret for you. In between episodes, I've been working slowly but surely on a project and finally at long last is ready to go. Oh, amethyst, sweet, beautiful amethyst. I calculated and for today's episode, it's 15 stacks of amethyst that I am going to need. 15, one, five, count it. That's gonna be these two rows as well and the other two that I just pulled out. But to be clear, it doesn't have to be that way. I just like to build things boldly, bigly, and beautifully. And I want that beautiful tinted amethyst glass. And the beautiful thing about today's build is, of course, all of those sweet drops is going to get us. I think we're going to configure it to get every single mob drop in the entire game. It's going to be beautiful. The second lovely thing about this design is the fact that it's relatively easy to build, which means you could absolutely and probably should absolutely build it in your world long long before day number 500 and interdimensional demon another little secret in between episodes i've also been grinding it out i'm gonna need these furnaces and i'm gonna need all this glass that i got here with my calculations eight stacks of sand it'll double with the amethyst glass and voila it'll be beautiful it'll be more than enough glass for today's build so let's talk about mobs so it sort of goes without saying, but when it comes to mob farming, one of the biggest reasons is those sweet tasty drops. Depending on how you want to configure it, it could also be like experience and things like that as well. But I think for today's episode, it's going to be solely focused on the drops. We're not worried about any experience from these farms. So this is a topic that I'm sure we've talked about more at some point in the series, but we'll touch on it a little bit. Thing number one, darkness. We need it to be dark for the mobs to spawn. Flip it over to nighttime inside of a flat world and look at what happens. All around us, a bunch of mobs spawn. But what if I told you we don't need to wait for the solar cycle to control things? Shocking! I know, I know, I know. We could basically build a big dark box and that'll work too. Now take a look at what's happening around me. You can see a bunch of mobs spawning, but then off in the distance, there are no mobs spawning. It's this chart that I refer- oh, that poor villager. Oh. I'm sorry about that, man. <laughs> this chart is all about mob spawning and how it works. So long story short, we cannot be too close, but also we cannot be too far away from the mobs. And last thing is last year for our basic mob spawning requirements, we need space. Let's say we had an area that was like maybe boxed in, like, uh, you know, something like this, but fully closed in. That's one block of space. Absolutely no chance a creeper, a zombie, or even a skeleton or a spider spawns in there. But if we say maybe had a box that was a little bit bigger, like let's say maybe two by two now with nothing in the floor, like it's nice and open, it was dark in there, absolutely mobs would be able to spawn. The basic rule of mob spawning is if the mob can fit inside of it, it could probably spawn there. There are different things that are going to affect mob spawning, like let's say carpets that'll block mob spawns. But yeah, long story short, if we can make a room that will fit these mobs in, like physically, we could probably guarantee that the mobs are going to spawn inside of that room. So we build a room that allows the mobs to fit inside of it so they could physically spawn. After they spawn, we want to remove the mobs. We got a couple different options. We could manually take them out, but I want an automatic farm that'll run while I'm doing anything over at my base. Like, let's say building a different build. So me taking them out, it's out of the question. So our next option when it comes to mob removal is maybe some sort of trap. We could build something with maybe a little bit of fire or maybe even a dispenser queued up, loaded up with so many arrows. I mean, those are nice and all. You see, it's a very basic thing even if you didn't have a brain you would know that every single mob in minecraft it has health and what if i told you like say 30 blocks or so we could drop almost any mob about 30 blocks from the air all the way down to the ground get in the farm nice and far away from me so that char yeah, yeah we'll be far enough away for mobs to spawn and look at this uh, every single time i drop a mob right here they're just falling and going away immediately if i had a couple hoppers down here on the ground all of this sweet juicy loot would be mine automatically and that's the plan. Two things to consider. Allow mobs to spawn. And how do you want to remove the mobs? The third thing to consider is location, location. Just like with any fully automatic, beautiful farm, we need to build this in a spot where it's going to be actually active and loaded in. I've been taking a look around at the world here. This is going to be up floating in the sky. I'm really happy with how the world's coming along. So I want to be really careful with how I add to the skyline. Immediately off the bat, two different options come to mind. I could build it off in the sky, kind of near the iron farm, but over there, 
Or maybe I could build it floating in the sky a little bit set behind the bamboo farm and start to expand the base over this hill. The scaffolding, sweet beautiful scaffolding, we will need all of you to come with me. You're gonna be a big help. Up in the air behind the bamboo farm. So I kind of have all these beautiful trees going on here, but this one tree in particular, it's a little bit smaller. And if I have to, I could go ahead and remove that cherry tree as well. I think maybe what we do is base the mob farm, say maybe centered, I, ah, uh, gosh, I don't know, maybe like something like that right there. Offset from the bamboo farm for when I build a building, except way high up in the air. Step number one of our mob farm today. Now I went ahead and made 42 pieces of scaffolding. Technically speaking, I could make this like, I don't know, 25 or so blocks up in the air and I should probably be good. But I can always go higher. As long as they don't go like 100 blocks away so mobs literally aren't spawning, it'll be good. Instead of going 25 blocks, I'll go 30. But instead of going 30, I think I'll actually go 40. And even 40 blocks straight up in the air off of the ground. By kicking this off with going 40 blocks up in the air, it'll ensure that every single mob that I drop from the bottom of this farm will definitely, unfortunately, fortunately, meet its uh, fate. The mob will go away as soon as I hit the ground, even once I add to this, maybe in the future very soon, with like a proper building that the mobs fall into. Ah, yes. So next things next, with a little bit of building blocks in my hand, it's time to move all the way up to the top of the farm. For this first layer of building blocks, this platform that we're about to build right here, it doesn't matter. You don't technically need spawnable blocks at all. Oh, the view from up here. It's stunning. It's gorgeous. Breathtaking even. Look at the whole world, the entire base. It looks so good. And also, at the same time, so small from up here. Anyways, we're going to pick a side. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, that would have been bad. Dad, I, I froze up. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I literally was shaking in real life, like waving my hands like I'm like a, a weird sad bird or something, not knowing what to do anyways. What we're going to do is pick a side and go off at the side very carefully. How do I do this? How does scaffolding work? We're going to pick a side, any side. This scaffolding right here is going to be dead center in our farm. Then we're going to go ahead and build a six block straight out in one direction. Direction doesn't really matter. Direction doesn't matter because after we build out in one direction, we're going to go back to the center and do it again. We're going to build out six more blocks in a different direction. After that, oh my gosh, you'll never believe what we're going to do. We're going to do it one more time. And then finally, we're going to do it one more time. We need to build out six blocks from the center because this bottom platform, when it's all said and done, needs to be 13 by 13. 13 by 13 platform. It's like I'm trying to summon Taylor Swift or something, but seriously, location. When it comes to this farm, you need to build this farm in a central location at your base that is going to be loaded in. If you're going to build this farm and not have an AFK platform, kind of like my hopeful eventual plan is to be with this farm, the best spot of all time for this farm is up high in the air, floating around the middle of your base. If you find out that specific location and build this farm right there, then you're never going to have any problems and this thing should hopefully run while you're just moving around at your base. On the other hand, if you don't get the location, your positioning of this farm just right, you'll find yourself in the situation of AFK platform above this farm. We'll talk a little bit more about that one a little bit later on. So anyways, all the way back up here at the top of the farm platform, 13 by 13 filled in all the way. Then what I decided to do is go ahead and get so many furnaces. So this way, I think all of the smelting that I'm going to need to do today, I put lava buckets from the beautiful lava farm inside of it. Talked about that a little bit more last episode. But anyways, with the furnaces smelting up here, maybe it hopefully won't be too much of a problem. So, so far, so good. A solid start to our farm. But right off the bat in the middle, we're going to leave a 3x3 three three hole. This is going to be the funnel that we're going to drop the mobs down into. To stop mobs from idling, lingering around on the side of this thing, we're going to actually replace the ring of blocks right around the ring of blocks right around the dropper hole thing in the middle with staircases facing forward. The type of staircase doesn't matter so long as it is a staircase facing forward. Now, after that, it's not going to work yet because I have open sides. I don't really know why I did that. You would have got the point. <laughs> we're going to need to build a water funnel to move the mobs all the way to the middle and drop them down. Long story short, this water funnel is going to consist of blocks in the corner raised up three blocks, three blocks, kind of making this whole like little diagonal corner, well, corner raised block thing. Do that in every corner. Then after that, it's time to begin to put the walls on this farm, this build. Now me, knowing a little bit about this farm, the build, and what I want to do with it aesthetically, I think what I want to do is start with a row of basalt, but technically, these walls could be anything that don't let light through. 
to create a controlled mob spawning environment all the way around this thing on every single side and also to make a dark room we're gonna need to put some kind of wall situation going on when it comes to this wall situation going on we're gonna need to from the bottom hanging off of the side diagonally up by one block right there go 12 blocks all the way up into the air after that i'm gonna need to go ahead and fill it in all the way on every single side it's gonna be a lot of blocks oh it's a lot of blocks there's so many blocks when it comes to aesthetics here this build is a dark evil thing look i consider the ethics of what we're doing today it's not looking too hot it's not great i figured i might as well go full send and become evil the operator dr waddles and make this thing look like a dungeon well, it's all of that plus the fact that I have so much extra basalt from doing that whole nether tunnel digging project that, I mean, hey, I like I, I like the look of the block. I might as well break it out and use it. By using the basalt that I've been farming up for a long, long time now, I don't have to take any more time, like, in between episodes or during the episode to get blocks and, you know, kind of running me out of time, running up to day number 500. The 3, 2, 1... Oh, yeah, 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 that's gonna look so cool floating up in the sky, and oh, man, that looks massive. I mean, I know it is massive, but that looks big. Literally, side note, will I take a minute to realize that it's thunderstorming? Oh, God. So, a little thing about this world, I love how it's coming together. I think it's starting to look so nice, but I can't deal with the thunderstorm. Not now. Oh, that's terrible. That makes me skip a day, too. Oh. I love how this world is coming along. Like, it's looking so nice and fully built out. And I really can't wait to see how this world ends up progressing into this next new year. Being at the end of the year, I always start, like, looking back, thinking about what I, like, achieved this year and everything like that. And I don't know. I guess I achieved a world that I'm kind of proud of so far. <laughs> I really like this whole area. The base, it's tight. It's concise. It's, it's cool. You know what? Thinking about it now, as I'm starting to finish up this whole shell right here with um, all of these beautiful blocks, I, I know I want to do some cool decorations, details on the side. I probably should have been worrying about that right now, right? Not after. Oh, no. All right, so here's what I was sort of thinking here. We could cut this thing into even sections. That's going to line up perfectly with the middle. We get a section of three and then almost like a section of three if we count that corner right there. Except, however, I think I want to do this whole cutting it up into different sections on the outside of the build. Imagine how cool it would look if I, say, had, like, basalt going from the bottom. I don't know how I'm going to turn that one, but we have basalt going from the bottom, going straight up all the way to the top. And I do it on every single side. Like, basically, what I'm saying here is something that looks a little bit like this. We have the basalt right there. Then we have it continue all the way up to the top of the build, wherever that is. So, you know, maybe if I could pull it off and make it look good, you know, something that looks a little bit like that, that could look really, really cool. And then maybe even I come in with a couple more details from the outside, like break the wall open, add something to it. Maybe like, oh, off the top of my head, iron bars could fit this palette like perfectly and look really, really cool too. Also, I think because of the whole time crunch here, I'm going to have to pull some of this off at nighttime. So I think as long as I stay up here, I should be safe. No mobs should spawn I'm way too close and... The ones down on the ground, I mean, they don't know how to use scaffolding. I think it'll be good. And we're back. We are so back. All right, so this build is becoming marvelous. I cannot wait to take a look at it from the ground. I haven't seen it quite yet, but I made it evil. It's dark. This is like a dungeon or something in the sky. I kind of have these basalt pillars going up on the outside. You'll see better from the outside. And then I put deep slate walls on there with iron bars. It's kind of funny. I started putting them on, then I realized, oh, wait, no. What if I, like, raised them up so it's almost like a gradient fading away into the glass and then fading back in up at the top is pretty cool down below i started to kind of figure out what i maybe want to do i connected the like the flat sides right there lowered that down a little bit but i still kind of am lost right here like what do i do a diagonal or something actually i think that's the answer 
Anyways, now next up, I've been busy farming wood over here because for this next step, we're going to need a lot of trap doors, and I'm also going to need spawning platforms. Great news. These spawning platforms could be literally anything in the world that is a spawnable block. In Minecraft, most normal blocks, say like dirt, uh, cobblestone, maybe basalt, that's a, that's a spawnable block. My basic rule of thumb when it comes to spawnable versus non-spawnable blocks is if there's something weird about it, like let's say tinted glass where you can kind of see through it, then it's probably not a spawnable block. So it's not gonna work. Now, not that I am really ever gonna see into this farm, but I do want to make sure that I like the looks of it, the aesthetic of this farm. So I'm thinking for my spawning platforms, maybe dark oak wood, that could be perfect. Our first spawning platform, pick a corner, any corner, and then from this spot right there on that three section that you built up, tower up two blocks. After towering up two blocks, it's time for a three by three platform. Not gonna lie, I don't know if I have enough wood in the inventory right now, so let's go ahead and start the platforms over here, then I'll skip like that corner for now and fill it in before I leave the farm. So our first platform, we pick a corner, any corner, go two blocks up off of that raised water funnel. And for the second platform, from this platform right here, we're gonna build one temporary block, two temporary block. Platform number two is going to be lined up with the middle of one of the sides. So that means when we're set and done with that, we have platform number one and now platform number two. For the next platform, we're going to basically copy it again. We'll skip two blocks right there. That's going to line us up perfectly with this corner. Then all we need to do is fill it in. Ha! <laughs> and just in time, I think this will probably, definitely be the final tree that I need to chop down. I'll chop it down and get it out of the way. So one of the beautiful things about a mob farm designed and built like this is it's all symmetry. If you're going to add floors to your farm, all you're basically going to do is copy the floor before. And so for our very first layer of platforms, lads, we're going to end up looking something like this. A bunch of platforms around the outside. The middle has a whole lot of unused space, though. So centered, a dead center in the middle, one final 3x3 three three platform. Now we're making these platforms 3x3 three three so we can control the mob spawn. We'll talk a little bit more about it before I close up the farm, but there's a trick we could do with these 3x3 three three platforms to cut out all spiders from your mob farm if you want to. But a little bit more on that later. First things first, let's go ahead and start by removing all of these random temporary blocks. After that, we're going to take two more temporary blocks, tower up two blocks, place a permanent block, and start it all again. This mob farm today that we're building is going to have a total of three layers. On each layer, we're going to have nine platforms centered and spaced exactly how I showed you I was basing them on the first layer. Hey, uh, side note, <laughs> everything looks so cool from up here. Like, being able to stand up here in the middle of the night, feel completely safe, and just look around at the base, how it's lit up. I mean, now that I have all these blocks and you can't see it as much, but it's so cool looking. Also, the glass up here is kind of like trippy. I'm like looking at this while placing a block, and it feels like it's like floating, but but it's not. Anyways, I did it. Layer number two, check done. In, good to go. Now, finally, with the dimensions of this outer walls that we built here today, we're gonna have room for one final spawning platform in here. We tower up two more blocks and then start placing the platforms. So from up here at the very top of this farm, floor number three, check done, complete. We have three symmetrical floors with platforms spaced out two blocks every single time. On each floor, if you have like temporary blocks that you're using to get up and down, make sure you come back in and pull all of those blocks out. We don't need them anymore. However, we do need a way up and down because there is one more thing, maybe two or three, that you might want to consider adding to all of your floors. Thing number one, looking at it now, I might not have enough of his expensive uh, trap doors. Trap doors are going to be the beauty that really makes this farm work. So check this out. If I line this side with trap doors right there, and then I line this side with trap doors right there, when they're open like this, I can move clear across them. If I were to like flip those open and try and do the same thing, I would end up falling. To a mob, when you place a trap door down, the trap door essentially always looks like this. It looks like it's constantly open. That means if I go ahead and flick these open, let's say I was a creeper that just spawned here, I'm not going to know any better. I'm going to try and walk that way eventually and fall into a water current. Water current moves me to the middle, and then I fall all the way down and find the end of my life. So look here, listen, this is the expensive spot, but you're gonna need to line the side of every single platform with trap doors all over your entire farm. And then after lining all the sides, you need to flip all the trap doors open as well. This is expensive. This is a lot of trap doors, the most expensive part of the bill. 
this is where if you wanted to I would recommend considering maybe you're a little bit earlier on in Minecraft or something maybe you're looking for a mob farm for whatever reason but you just don't have all the wood quite yet and you don't want to farm it well my friend if that's you I've got great news you could totally build this farm and say maybe make it one layer and then leave it like that for now until later on once you have a little bit more wood trap doors and stuff like that generally speaking the more layers you add to this mob farm the better it's going to be when it comes to rates and efficiency and everything like that in my opinion for basic use of three layers is probably going to be good enough for your standard single player survival world alas and so it was at this moment a sad sorrowful fade was meant trap doors i'm out of them and i have one entire floor left to go and a little bit left of this one that means i'm gonna have to go down to the ground and farm a little bit more dark oak trees uh, i mean at least we're almost all the way done with the farm at least there's that Oh, uh, fancy seeing you here, sir. I'm... All right, never mind. Hey, oh, you know what that I just thought of, though? Now that I'm building this mob farm, bones are not going to be a situation that I need to worry about going forward into the future, which means bone meal. Look, don't ask me how I'm just now realizing this, but bone meal is never going to be a problem again. No issue problems with bone meal? That means I can use it all up. <laughs> I can use it all up right now and have more by the end of the episode. Ha! <laughs> I love a mob farm. A good mob farm is so useful. Oh, and you know what? I almost completely forgot about it, but spider spawning and actually limiting this farm, customizing it for creeper spawning only as well. Both options are totally doable. If you want to limit this farm for creeper spawning, you need even more trap doors. You're gonna need to line the ceiling of every single platform with a trap door. You know, something kind of like this right here. Because creepers are slightly shorter than skeletons and zombies, this will stop zombies and skeletons from spawning, but allow creepers to spawn inside of this farm. Now for a creeper farm, that's something maybe we'll take a look at doing a little bit later on. So I'm not worried about that. I'm not gonna do it today. Spiders, ooh, spiders are the big, bad, annoying, ugly ones. Spiders could be a big problem in this farm, especially depending on how you build your mob funnel where you drop them. They can like climb the walls and basically not uh, be taken away. If you want to stop spiders from spawning, put something in the middle on every floor. When it comes to that thing, what it should be, usually I would recommend just putting a carpet there. It's cheap, small, streamlined, and easy to put in. You see on a horizontal horizon, for a spider to spawn, you need a 2x2 two two space. If you put something in the middle, you no longer have any valid 2x2s two in this entire farm. Final stack of wood. Will I have enough? Will he be able to do it? And I think I'm going to be able to do it. I think I can. The triumphant song from somewhere nearby, it begins to echo, billow, boom through my ears. Oh, I can hear it. I can hear it. It's getting louder and louder. Almost too loud even. No, no, no. Yes, we've done it. Trap doors for this entire farm, I knew I could do it. I knew it was only a matter of trees. I chop them down and eventually I can't be stopped. I'm determined. Now all I need to do is open them up. And oh yeah, yeah, by the way, spiders, I don't care about spiders spawning in this farm today. I actually, to be honest, like the idea of it because of how I'm gonna configure my whole dropping situation in a minute, it's not gonna be a problem for any spiders. It doesn't matter. There is one more big thing that we need to add in and that's gonna be some fence gates over here to stop any water from flowing down and ruining the entire farm. More specifically, we're going to need a total of eight fence gates. We're going to want to open those fence gates so they're like, you know, practically invisible and things can move right through them, but water is stopped by them. Oh, well, 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 what do I hear? <laughs> Phantom, it's funny, I kind of actually like just slept for the first time in a long, long time and all of a sudden the phantoms are here. Water. You see, for our farm today, water is the big controller. With water currents, mobs will not be able to resist these things. They're going to fall into them, and I mean, I guess they could swim against them for a little while, but eventually, they're going to give it up and just move straight over to the middle. By putting a water current in the very corner of every single side with these raised platforms, all of your water should end up looking something like this. Hey, oh, I'm in a meadow, so this water, it is quite beautiful looking. Now, for now, all the way up at the top of the farm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be good. We'll be back up in a minute. Down here on the ground, it's time for that item collection system. Now, depending on how you want to set up your mob farm, if you want to use more blocks, make a proper funnel. Box that whole 3x3 three three in, like from where that block is right there, all the way down to the ground. Then you're only going to need a total of 9 hoppers, which is pretty nice. That reminds me though, before I take the scaffolding out, I should finish up what I was doing over here. And I came in with like these cool little like... Uh, it's kind of hard to see from this angle, but it's meant to be like a curve looking thing. I think it'll look pretty... Ah, uh, man. I think, I hope something like this is gonna end up looking pretty cool from down on the ground. Oh, whoops. Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to do that yet. Uh, where was the middle? 
All right, well, scaffolding. Scaffolding is definitely a thing. I want to say this was the middle right here, dead center. I, I gotta double check it just to be sure. It would be bad if this whole hopper thing was one block off. That would be really, really annoying. Is this the middle? Uh, yes. Yes, it appears so. That's dead center. Okay, good. Hoppers. Because of how I'm gonna set this thing up, I might have to end up chopping down like one more tree or something. We're gonna need a lot of hoppers for this configuration, but it's gonna look beautiful. From dead center right there, we're gonna pick a side and place a chest. We'll eventually turn that into a double chest. We don't worry about it. This is dead center and I know it for sure now, so I can go ahead and remove that. Keeping that whole dead center thing in mind, we're gonna create a ring of hoppers, three by three, around dead center. After that, because I'm gonna leave this open, I'm going to need to add three additional hoppers on every single side. Three extra hoppers lined up each side that should probably, 95% sure, that should actually catch all the drops, hopefully. I'm pretty sure, 95% sure that's gonna catch every drop from this farm. Also, down below this farm, now that it's built up high in the sky, it's gonna get dark down below. You're gonna need to definitely come back in and add a little bit of lighting to stop mobs from spawning down below this farm. And I didn't even kick it all off yet. So now it's time. The very final thing that we need to do to kick this mob farm off with all the water currents in, fence gates, and hopper collection down below the thing, we need to move back up to the top of this thing and slap a roof on it, baby. Then we just need to move away and this should be good to go. Haha, <laughs> the big, the bad, the so scary mob farm. This thing is so high up in the air. This is gonna be seen from like literally everywhere at the base and I'm, I'm really hoping that like, we'll be able to just see mobs falling in the background of the episodes. Like my goal with this build today was just like always add to the base to make it look really, really cool in the process, but also, but also at the same time, add a cool ambient effect that from this point on, it's going to be your job to keep track of. You watch the background of the episodes and hopefully you let me know if it looks good. Amethyst glass, amethyst glass. I think I got just enough amethyst glass to finish off the entire project. If not, I guess I have extra amethyst down below, but hopefully I don't need it. The very final thing that you're gonna wanna do to kick off your mob farm and get it good to go is put some kind of block on the ceiling. And make sure this top layer, however many layers you do, three, one, five, I don't know. And make sure it sits two blocks above your very final layer and make sure it's built entirely out of blocks that let zero light through at all. And before closing up your farm all the way, double, triple, quadruple check that you have all of your trap doors in. They're all like flipped the right direction and you don't have like light sources inside of the farm or nothing like that. Now look, look, I'm so tempted. I'm up on top of this farm while I'm at it. I've been adding these things to every single build. I guess it's gonna make it match like this thing right there. Like literally, it's like a, almost like a floating extension of that build. Even though it's different blocks, I guarantee it's gonna look pretty similar. But look, I, I feel like illegally I have to. I love these whole spike things. So we'll add some spike things. Another thing you're gonna wanna do to your top of the farm, depending on what blocks you use to block it in, is remember to light up the very top of it. If you're planning on building this farm and then say like AFKing overnight or something, well, mobs could definitely spawn up on top of the farm, depending on the block that you use. That's why I hid some lanterns up here. They look beautiful and they're not gonna affect the farm at all, at least on the inside. You know, I'm thinking about it now as I'm bouncing around trying to put these bikes in. I have now built a build taller than the tallest mountain in this entire area. I don't know what it is with me and tall builds, but I love them. I love when I build a build that's like super tall, taller than the land around it, or maybe just in general a massive tall looking build, but I don't know if you noticed what happened. As soon as I put that final amethyst glass in here, it got nice and dark. This mob farm is basically ready to go. The only thing stopping it is me. I'm too close. Now at this point, you've got options. Depending on how you wanna use your farm, if you want the best rates, pick the middle spot right here and go about 100 blocks up in the air above. Make a small AFK platform, kinda like we did in this episode, basically, in fact, literally copy that platform, and then stand there. You should get pretty good rates. Alternatively, because of where I built this mob farm, you know, floating up in the air at my base in a spot that's always gonna be loaded in, I should be able to just move around the base. It's not gonna be as good of rates because mobs will be spawned in the caves down below here, but I should be able to move around the base and as soon as I'm far enough away from this mob farm, mobs should theoretically begin to drop out of this thing, land on the hoppers, and because it's 40 blocks above the ground, be taken out pretty much automatically. All that I need to do is get a little bit of a ways away from it and I guess just look at it. So that's the thing here. I don't know what the rates are gonna be like because they don't know what it's like when it comes to like caves underneath the base here. But somewhere over here, say, the mob farm should probably definitely be loaded in still. 
Ah, uh, I don't know if you can see it. It is definitely loaded in here. Ah, uh, we got like something like a zombie up top, and oh boy, the mob farm it kicks off with probably the most useful mob drop of them all a skeleton bones just like that lads laddies everybody i don't know if you see those mobs falling right there but we've done it we built ourselves a handy little mob farm that is going to rain mobs out of the sky anytime we're literally anytime we're living over here at the base we're gonna get any basic mob drop for for literally free by just living at the base it's an existence of pure pure sweet mob profit ah, i'm evil for this one <laughs> But they also kind of deserved it, right? And so that's it. That's how it's done. Your super basic mob farm that is super amazing, too. If you're looking for a concise step-by-step -step tutorial, great news, I've got one of those. Even more great news, what day do you think it is? Did we finish in time? <laughs> oh, we finished just in the nick of time. Right now is sunsets. Day number 496 rolls in and our beautiful mob farm. <laughs> oh my gosh, the beautiful mob farm. I might be too far away from it over here for it to be active, but... That beautiful mob farm, that adds to the base for sure. That's so cool looking. Now, usually I would AFK in between episodes over at this farm, but uh, you know how it goes. Episode 500 coming up soon. So we'll do an AFK session after episode 500. You remind me. I'm running out of time here. Smash the like, subscribe for more episodes. Patrons get early access to these episodes. World downloads, channel members. Dab join for more. Until next time, it's been me, your lad, Waddles. And then I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.